I sometimes feel like the home is the site most drenched in stereotypical gender roles. Even if the idea that women only stayed at home and took care of the house was fairly outdated when I was a kid, it was still assumed that the men were the primary earners and the women, even if they also had a job, kept the house clean, kept the kids in line, cooked the meals, and made sure everything happened when, where, and how it needed to be done. Men and boys did the outdoor chores, women and girls did the indoor chores. I didn't really question any of this as a kid, but as I got closer to adulthood, it started bothering me how often it was assumed that I would take on the bulk of the cleaning, and how I had never really been taught how to mow the lawn or chop wood. And to this day, when doing certain household chores, I remember tricks that I learned from the American Girl magazine. And then I get instantly angry because why was the American Girl magazine giving us tips on how to clean the house? I mean, skills any kid should learn, sure, but do you think Boy's Life was regularly publishing tips on tidying up? When I was growing up, I tried to express my gender through my interests. Cars, skateboarding, gross-out cartoons and jokes. All things I was genuinely interested in, but which also conveniently defined me as different than most of the girls in my life, as having more in common with the boys. I did have some girl interests too. I had a ton of dolls and stuffed animals, all with their own elaborate backstories. I liked some girl books like the Amber Brown series and Harriet the Spy. But since I was often grouped with the girls, I ended up becoming more well-versed in those girl things. Because despite my best efforts, I was only ever a passing stranger in the boys club. I wasn't always around for the more casual discussions and weekend outings. You know, I would have loved to race RC cars and fight about Indiana Jones versus James Bond. Instead, I traded gel pin collections and joined in debates about who was which Spice Girl. Not necessarily things I disliked, but the gender of the peers I was grouped with led me to become an expert in one set of interests instead of the other. And this dissonance surfaces for me sometimes as an adult when I hang out with my cis men friends and listen to them debate the different die-hard movies, I can sometimes feel like I missed out. I'm sure I could have watched those movies as a girl, plenty of girls did and do, but those weren't the movies that my friends were watching at sleepovers. We were watching the Olsen twins and whatever teenage rom-com the latest pop singer was in. And you know what? Some of those movies were great. And so I find myself then simultaneously feeling a little left out for not having seen all the top action movies of the 90s that the boys were watching, and feeling sad for my now grown up cisgender male friends who didn't get to experience the absolute joy of movies like The Princess Diaries. And again, some of them did and could have watched The Princess Diaries just like I could have watched Indiana Jones. But it's kind of sad that admitting to watching it or wanting to discuss it with your friends would have marked you as different, and therefore maybe prohibited you from ever seeking out movies or toys or anything beyond what you were told you should like as a boy or as a girl. Or just being separated so much by gender meant that you never even heard of a whole bunch of things that you might have actually been really into. In a press interview about the Barbie movie, Kate McKinnon said, Gender roles deny people half their humanity. And that's really stuck with me. How many potential interests or skills do we all miss out on because of what society tells us we're supposed to like or do? Being a trans guy who didn't really know it until I was in my 20s and therefore grew up as some sort of tomboy, I feel like I was a little freed from those constraints. I had a Barbie and a bunch of Hot Wheels. 
I mostly stuck to boy toys and media, both out of genuine interest and a desire to express my masculinity, but I was free and encouraged to explore girl toys, media, and roles. So I feel lucky in that way. I think I still missed out on half, but the half that I got was half blue and half pink. Like I got some girly stuff, but not all of it. And I got some boyish stuff, but not all of it either. You know, as a kid, if I wasn't that good at catching a baseball or using a hammer right away, it was easy for the men in my life to give up on me quickly, because it's not like I really needed to be good at those things. So even when I did express an interest, I wasn't often given a chance to really dive in and hone that skill. Meanwhile, despite my resistance to things like cooking and cleaning, the pressure was put on me to learn them. And not usually in a domineering way, but sometimes more subtly. Like my grandma bonding with me through baking, but not extending that invitation to my brother. Or Girl Scout badges, including achievements for things like sewing and cross-stitching. I guess this has been on my mind because my days lately have been filled with a lot of household tasks. I'm preparing for a new person to move in, so I've been taking the opportunity to do a lot of reorganizing and cleaning and fixing stuff that I have been putting off for far too long. And as I said, the home feels like a place where gender roles can be dialed up to the extreme. You know, like the cleaning skills stereotypically associated with women, the home repair skills stereotypically associated with men. And maybe you could even argue that the sense that I have that I need to prepare and like refresh a house for a new person moving in is a result of being socialized as a girl, somehow having that awareness of the household. And for me, I do think it was a little bit, but it's mostly just who I am. Like when I was a teenager, I once confronted my dad about how I had so many more household cleaning chores than my brother. And he said it was because I just noticed stuff more than they did. So it made sense for those chores to be my job. At the time, I was so mad because it sounded like one of those bullshit excuses that mostly husbands tend to make to wives of like, Oh, you're just so much better at doing dishes than I am. You should do it because, you know, I'd just mess it up. But as I have gotten older, I've realized that I personally really do tend to notice things that are dirty or out of place more than the average person. I like my space to be ship shape and I genuinely enjoy the work of getting it there. Like if I could, I would legitimately spend all day, every day working on my house, like cleaning and keeping the household running, but also renovating and repairing stuff. You know, my dream job is stay at home dad. And I don't think any of that is or needs to be gendered, but the parts of that that I am currently good at and the parts that I still need to learn and get better at are directly related to what I was exposed to, taught, and encouraged in as a kid based on the gender I was raised as. Like, I still have to Google how to fix most things. I'm not good at using power tools, yet there are a ton of basic home repair things that I am just unaware of. And I'm looking forward to learning all of that as time goes on, especially once I live somewhere where things like that will actually be my responsibility and not just a phone call to my landlord or the management company. Some of this is very much an urban renter versus suburban or rural homeowner divide, like maybe more so than gender. But those are tasks that I am genuinely interested in learning and getting better at, just like I am also genuinely interested in the best ways to do laundry. I have finally mastered folding a fitted sheet without having to look it up while I do it, and I feel very accomplished. And that's something that I didn't learn growing up, but which, you know, some people would put into the feminine gender box. I really don't think that any of these skills or interests should define anything about my gender. And I hope that as we all become ever more aware of just how entrenched the world is in gendered expectations, that fewer and fewer kids are being raised with 
certain interests off limits to them. Like what a bummer to never even realize that you might be interested in something because it was never even presented to you as a possibility. You know, how many more boys might be into baking cookies and learning to sew and watching girl movies if they had been shown it as an option for them, or if they hadn't feared what it said about them as a boy. Or as an example from my own life, you know, despite trying to engage with stereotypically boy interests as a kid, there were so many more of those things that I didn't realize I liked until after I transitioned as an adult and I was sort of expected to get into them. Like being expected to follow sports as a man eventually led to a genuine interest in football. But the little social push of some men really only being able to communicate via sports stats was what made me initially try to pay attention. And that grew into an actual enthusiasm. And I sometimes wonder like, how many other things I thought I disliked as a kid might have I enjoyed if given that little social nudge? Kind of like the social nudges I was given towards girl interests that then I was free to explore. As binary trans people, there can sometimes be a tendency to overcompensate to either prove our gender to others or to personally indulge in aspects of our affirmed gender that might have been off limits to us before. In the broader trans population and beyond, there are also efforts to disentangle gender from interests, hobbies, roles, skills, clothing, everything. And I don't think either of those goals are mutually exclusive. I can personally find affirmation in wearing a suit without feeling like wearing a suit on its own makes anyone a man, or that every man has to wear a suit to be a man. And I think it's wonderful to imagine a world in which everyone is free to do, like, wear, and be whatever they want without any constraints or assumptions based on gender. But doing that disentangling also requires us to acknowledge the very real ways in which society writ large does still gender those things, as well as reckoning with how they were gendered for us in our own upbringing, or how we still engage with the gendering of those things now. I've had to do a lot of unpacking of expectations that I resented or rebelled against when I was raised as a girl. I don't know that I would enjoy housekeeping as much if it was still expected of me based on my gender. You know, there is a hefty dose of male privilege in me being able to say how much I enjoy it, even if that admission in itself is a reversal of gendered expectations. As I continue filling in a lot of the gaps in my pop cultural and practical knowledge base, I'm trying not to pick up new hobbies based solely on what I feel like I missed out on growing up, or avoid certain ones because they're too often associated with femininity. I'm just following what sounds interesting to me, leaning into that full breadth of my own humanity, even if my version of that might look a little more boring or even binary at first glance compared to other people's. Spackling's gonna happen another day. All right, I know it was just like, why did you take those out and do nothing with it? Because I haven't decided what I'm doing yet. Maybe I'm gonna wait and see uh, what the new person might wanna do with it. That's the story of those holes. <laughs> That's all we're doing today.